Hello, you. Welcome to another episode of the Nanaya Yebua podcast. I have traveled all the way to Nova Scotia, from Ghana through to Nigeria to Nova Scotia. Woo! <laughs> to take out this handsome gentleman, Adegoke. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get it right? Yeah, well, that's cool. That's good. I, I have I hear a lot of various variations of the name, so I'm I'm used. Anyone is okay by me. Uh, Ade, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. look look at how he's even smiling. He wants me to toast him. I had to toast this man before he came on the show. The big big grammar questions he was asking me. You don't know what is in store for you, but this is going to be a beautiful conversation of Black history, Blacks in Canada, or and Africans in Canada. And you are in Nova Scotia, one of the places historically many Black Canadians settled and the home of Africville. That is historic uh, significance. So if you chance to be watching this podcast and you don't know about Africville, please Google it up. It's always great to know a part of Black Canadian history. Whether you were born here or like an immigrant like myself came in about you know a quarter of a century ago, have children here, they all need to learn the story of Black people in Canada. And that is what I am about. The importance of storytelling, the importance of us telling our own stories and crafting or drafting or you know navigating our own futures. What story do we want to tell? What legacies do you want to leave? And in so speaking, Ade is here with us. He is the president. I like to start from the top. <laughs> he is the president association of Nigerians in Nova Scotia. Hey, hey. <laughs> I I don't want I don't want to know how your meetings go, but uh, I salute you. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Nana. It's nice to be here. It's always an opportunity to you know, just to connect. I think what you're doing is great. Uh, it's important for us to be the custodians of our story, you know, and, and you're doing a remarkable job, you know, telling our story ourselves. For too long as Africans, our stories have been rewritten and been told on our behalf. And anybody who tells a story will tell you based on the biases that they have. And so many of those stories haven't favored us. So that's why people like you need to be supported, need to be encouraged. And that's why when you call, I answer. <laughs> <laughs> when I call, you answer, but you made me toast you. <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't a toast. I just uh, just needed you know, to just uh, ask necessary questions. <laughs> I love this vibe. I love this vibe. I love this vibe. Yes. As much as we tell in our stories, you know, you and I were born on the continent and are here. And we meet our brothers and sisters who have been here generations longer than we have. I do understand that one of your missions is also bri um, building bridges that divide. Can you please elaborate more on that? Like I, I, people know me to say that the more bridges we create, the more prosperous we are as a people. That's mm -hmm. why you see every economy of the world always insists on creating bridges because it's not enough for you to have value in one place. Because if you have value, whether the value is farm produce, whatever that value is, as long as you do not have the bridge across from where you are to the next, you're not able to transact that value into terms that become profitable for you. Mm -hmm. So building bridges is very vital, is very important because it speaks about the importance of connecting. It speaks about the importance of people. It speaks about the importance of being able to not just create value, but also to ensure that value becomes utilized mm -hmm. and becomes important. So that for me is important. And when I ran as president of the association, I ran talking about you know creating those bridges to, across those divides. One of the things you see about us as Blacks and as African, whether you've been anywhere for 400 years, 4,000 years, or just 40 years, is that we've been taught 
to live in silos. We've been taught to live in segregation. So to suspect one another, you know, that's why even in the continent of Africa, it's easier for you to travel to Europe than to travel to some other African country because we've been divided. And that's why the message of building bridges is so critical, so important that we, we begin to understand that I'm only as prosperous as the connections I create. Then you begin to take it seriously. So I'm hoping that people will begin to understand the value, the importance of building those networks and those bridges. And that's what I'm personally about. And that's what I have tried to do over these years, you know, to just create bridges across all different divides, whether it's historical black communities, the African diaspora communities, whether it's with the host communities, you know, let's create those bridges because mm -hmm. that's the only way we can prosper as a people. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I, I knew we were going to have a great conversation, but when I listen to you and others having that conversation, it's different. This is you and I, having mm. that conversation and you know one of the other things i always say that this platform is also to build bridges as well the more we have conversations about who we are where we coming from the more we share part of ourselves to our brothers and sisters who don't know what back home is mm. and learn from us as well and then we also learned from their experiences. Um, Ghana became independent in 1957 because Dr. Osagefo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was also supported. And um, when he was in the US, got to see what it was the civil rights movement was like. Mm -hmm. So Maya Angelou, Martin Luther King, and uh, um, Malcolm X, they were part of that, you know, insightfulness of what we could do. And if you learn from us and you go, this is what you can do. Mm. This, mm. you are on your land. Mm. You need that freedom. That is your land. So th those connections without the civil rights movement, for instance, you and I would not probably be here. So the sweat, the blood and the tears of our four um, parents needs to be acknowledged and our brothers and sisters also. So what you said is perfectly beautiful. Nova Scotia. Talk to me from Nigeria to Nova Scotia from end to end. <laughs> so you're catching the drift. <laughs> yes. Nova Scotia, for, I like Nova Scotia for many things. Um, obviously, for me, I lived in Lagos or Lagos, or some people would call it. Uh, no, we like the Lagos. Lagos, right. Okay, thank yeah. you. We don't we don't call them Lagos. No Lagos right. we, we call them Lagosians. Lagosians. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, obviously, I lived my life born and bred in Lagos, where it's the, you know, it's the Boston, it's, it's, it's the is what you call the commercial nerve center of Nigeria, mm -hmm. where at least at some point have over 15 million people. I wanted something a lot different, a lot quieter. So Nova Scotia was ideal. I love the Atlantic, which is surrounded by in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of the, I would call it trade-offs, but there were some, so many similarities for me mm -hmm. and for my family. I wanted somewhere that obviously we you like I always I said something when I landed in Nova Scotia some many years ago some years ago and I said that the difference between Nova Scotia and my and Lagos is our systems work mm -hmm. you know so that's one of the biggest challenges that we've had as as blacks as Africans we haven't learned how to create systems that work you know we a lot of our systems are people or personality driven or reliant so when personality goes, the system seems to fade off. And we, we've seen it in all in different places. So, but I just realized here they have systems. And I felt like it was important for my kids to be raised in a place where they see how systems are created. Mm -hmm. Because there's, I, I didn't grow up seeing systems created. I grew up seeing strong personalities driving agendas, mm -hmm. driving narratives and the rest. Because I feel like the future of Africa and, uh, and Africans is going to be just like what China has been able to successfully do. You know, back in the late 90s, the early 90s, they sent a lot of their people to go learn how systems mm -hmm. are, what the way, and they came back with those knowledge. So what I say is that there has to be um, synergy between 
almost like a policy, you know, mm -hmm. driven by government to figure out how do we get the best of us that are out there to come back, who have recognized, who have understood how systems are created, to come and create them. Because it's not enough for you to drive things through personalities, because mm -hmm. personalities would not always be. So a uh, negotiation represents how systems are, how they work, and, and I'm excited to just leave glean and learn amongst that but most importantly that my children can also have that opportunity and so it's, but, but we, it will only happen with us being deliberate calling their that their attention to that so that they take those salient points and recognize that there's a place that they can transmit that knowledge to eventually oh wow nice 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 <laughs> was that from your end <laughs> I don't, know, probably. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry i'll edit that part no yes. problem oh goodness gracious so we've talked about systems building bridges and um I, there is a festival that you put together as well uh, by the way ghana jalov hands down don't even start <laughs> just agree we should have that conversation in the office today you know, so everybody knows that Nigeria Jollof is it, but I, I would I would concede for you tonight because uh, on I'm this platform, guest. I agree, Ghana Jollof. I'm a, I'm your guest, so I'll just be, <laughs> I'll be I'll behave, but but you know you know better, right? You know. <laughs> I just felt like putting it out there. <laughs> But you know, I'm sure you saw that we had a Jollof cook-off competition. Yes, I did. <laughs> and we as generals uh host we allowed ghana to win the that day to carry the day you know because we, we are very hospitable you know nigerians are very hospitable. Eh? Hmm. <laughs> i didn't tell you i grew up in Edo state so don't even start oh, so, so you ah, so <laughs> so you're tiwa, tiwa. <laughs> yeah so so le le let's go to your um how do you call it Let's go to the community, you know, bre breaking down community and um, the festival, the intentions behind the festival and um, how do you call it, bringing the people together. Yeah. So obviously we, we beyond the first, the festival seems is like the crescendo of our mm -hmm. calendar year, but there are a lot of activities that take place leading to that. Um, mm -hmm. There are so many of such initiatives. So for example, we have what we call the airport pickup, where newcomers, people who arrive in Nova Scotia for the first time, mm -hmm. and we have touch base with the association before they come. Mm -hmm. We pick them up at the airport for free of charge. We offer them their first meal, whether there's a family of one or a family of five or seven, we mm -hmm. offer them their first meal. We also create what we call um, the opportunity to be able to settle into, into Nova Scotia. So we have what you call the meet and greet session, where we bring various employers, uh, some mm -hmm. of the largest employers, into those meetings. We also use that as an opportunity to train and inform people about the difference between Africa and Nova Scotia from in terms of how you raise your kids, mm -hmm. how you talk to them, you know, the implications of not doing some of those things right. And mm -hmm. so we create all of that opportunity. So we have, you know, the meet and greet. We have a, a programs like um, the annual barbecue festival uh, because we we have right now, Nigeria right now is the largest blacks born outside of Canada in Nova Scotia. We're the largest, you know. Um, so as a result of that, we have what we call, um, we used to start out many years ago as a picnic, and you know, over the years, it has grown under my leadership. It has become a, what we call a carnival, right? Mm -hmm. and the last one we had in August is every August, we had over 2,000 people there. And it has become so big that everybody is there. The MPs are there, the MLA, mm -hmm. members, mm -hmm. of, members of parliament are there, mm -hmm. the premier send representatives, you know, because is huge mm -hmm. and so we have a lot of this type of activities going on we have trainings for our people we have partners with a lot of you know companies like rbc mm -hmm. who are we're training and keeping our people with necessary skill sets mm -hmm. because it's important for our people to not just survive here but to try mm -hmm. that's why my you know, scripture is so different from at least for nigerians than a lot of the other bigger provinces out there because people come in here and they're not living or survival jobs as such mm -hmm. i'm not referring to international students because that's a new, mm -hmm. new um, uh, scenario of situations we're dealing with but people are able to literally move, yeah professionals literally move forward so if you were 
if you were probably a nurse in Nigeria, you probably can mm -hmm. be a nurse here, an accountant, you know, so you're able to transit without having to do the flipping of the burgers. I'm not saying mm -hmm. there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, you're able to move from the height of your career, even though you're still starting mm -hmm. uh, at some lower levels, but at least in the field that you're that training. You train. oh, okay. So I think that's for us some of the unique things about Nova Scotia, and that's why we love it. Uh, but that's why I always encourage people have the right documentation before you show up, because mm -hmm. we're only really able to assist people who have work permits, who are PRs and the likes, you know. Mm -hmm. It's easier to, for us to be able to assist you in okay. those regards. Yeah. So so for me, uh, um, um, talking about the festival itself, so the festival is in nine days of activities. Right? That is like, whoa. Yeah, it that always sounds goes right. everybody's mind. There's always nine days. The first week of October here in Halifax has been dedicated at Nigerian Week. It's recognized. So then we start mm -hmm. out the week with the flag raising with mm -hmm. the mayor, deputy mayor, and some members of the legislative assembly. There we do showcase of a lot of our cultural dances mm -hmm. in the open at the parade ground mm -hmm. where people get to enjoy, hear our music, hear us play, hear us have fun. The flag mm -hmm. goes up, our flag is flown across. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's some level of sense of pride in mm -hmm. being able to have that done. And so that kickstarts a series of activities. The way we've done, or the way the association is programmed is we understand the, what we call the eight critical stakeholders. So mm -hmm. each of those activities are tailored around for different critical stakeholders. So we have one of the days has something about health week, which we call the Black Health Affairs, where we talk about what we're dealing with as you know as blacks. We have some unique um, mm -hmm. You know, you know, things just cause some attention. It's been said that a lot of people come, immigrants come in very healthy, and years after, because of the sedimentary life, you know, you know Nigeria is the way that we are always are. Uh, you the sun. Uh, uh, but if you have more sedimentary, you're hardly working, you more. And um, mental health as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, mental health. So we, we bring all of that to bear mm -hmm. and to the forefront during the week to stress that importance. So we have our professionals, our doctors. So even during the health care, we do blood tests and we do sugar tests, your, your BMI yes. and all of that stuff. So just so that if you have not even had the timing because you're chasing one money or the other, that week offers that opportunity to just mm -hmm. be able to you know, check your, just to bring to fore the importance of your health. We have something for the kids. Uh, we call it family olympics you know mm -hmm. so so there's always something like that there so the crescendo of it is the dinner night which you know which i get that's one that gets all of the publicity mm -hmm. and all the awareness but there's a lot of activities leading up to that so we we have what we call the food bank where we go to Hope Cottage, we help feed uh, mm -hmm. people. Who are, we know we have a lot of homeless situations, right? Mm -hmm. And we help feed, prepare the meals, mm -hmm. and serve those meals. So we have Hope. So, the, so even though it looks like nine days of activities, and it's a lot, it's enormous. It is intense. Yeah, it's intense because it's back to back to back. But yes. We have different project managers that run each of those aspects. Mm -hmm. And as a result, people who are passionate around those various areas, mm -hmm. you know, are the ones who become the forebearers of that. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it look easier because mm -hmm. we, we allow people to express their passion. We create mm -hmm. a platform for them to be able to do that. And then the crescendo is the Africa is the night, which we call the African royalty night. Because as mm -hmm. African royalty, we are you know, we we are priestly, we are kingly, and all of that, you know. And so we always grand. It's always it's always mind blowing. I remember when we had, the, we moved to a particular venue last year. The venue could take about six hundred six fifty because that's mm -hmm. you know with tables and chairs and all that. And so somebody was saying that I've oh, I've been to this very many many times, but I've never seen it this fine. We go <laughs> all out. It's always incredible. The the the. I, I really celebrate all the volunteers that we have, remarkable mm -hmm. individuals. They turn the place upside, and they just make it so glorious that anyone will come. So I remember uh, the the premier sent uh, one of the MLS to give a speech, and the guy was like, you know what, the premier needs to be at the next one. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. And we always have, you know, just our kids perform, our women perform. We just give opportunities to celebrate our music, our culture, our food. You know, mm -hmm. so basically we call it bringing Nigeria to Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. So that's what that whole eight days is about, nine days about, so that you understand the beauty, the people, the music, the food, the reason, and mm -hmm. the connections of what makes us Nigerians. And because when people, what you understand, you do not fear. 
And yes. the reason why people fail off is because they do not have understanding. And so that's why we try to make sure that that understanding exists so that they can understand. Because people say that just are very boisterous, we're loud, that our conversation looks like we're fighting. So that begins to help people have a better clarity. Because mm -hmm. we've seen people call the cops on, on some families simply because they heard the, some loud conversations mm -hmm. and they, they were fighting you know, because they don't know better. So those, that if those events offer us an opportunity to be able to explain and express who we are. And I think that's helped us. And as a result of that, people are able to get jobs faster. It's known now that it's better to employ a Nigerian, you know, because they will deliver and, mm -hmm. and they're highly qualified and things. So those are things that we're able to sell on those such moments. It's it's beautiful that you say that I, I work with a Nigerian anesthesiologist and it, it, it's within the space that we work and being minority two black women just working in a sea of white people <laughs> and yes it's seeing you know one of your anesthesiologists also being from back home mm. it, it, it is beautiful to to see that and when i see i greet and i kind of bend they're looking at me it's like ah, <laughs> yeah that is respect you know mm. what i mean mm. so it it, it 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 is beautiful uh, now i see that previously there used to be a lot of Ghanaians, but nigerians have taken over see the conundrum for me is nigerians outside of Nigeria are an amazing group, beautiful group of Africans. Omo, what did they happen for back home? That one, I know, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that plagues us back home, sometimes I see it come to fore also in the diaspora. We're very emotional, sentimental people, right? So we, one of our biggest problems is that we haven't learned to, I always say we must learn to put the best people forward for leadership. So in Nigeria, back home, the best of us are not the ones who are playing it at the level of leadership that brings about change. And I understand why, for many reasons. One, obviously, because your threat of life. So, so somebody... So there are some things that you do here, you know, you see politicians walking the streets, mm -hmm. you know, in Nigeria, people are killed just because you're a threat that you might win an election. So obviously that would mean the best of people wouldn't want to come out. So what we have in Nigeria coming out are the, what you call, the, those who, are, who can create the most trouble or those who have the greatest strength to demonstrate, mm -hmm. not in terms of leadership, but in terms of physical attributes or being able to muster enough. So that's what has happened to us back home. And I, I, I personally believe that the Nigerian system needs to move away from the presidential system in order for it to work. You know, because one of the, the beauty about a parliamentarian election is the fact that you do not have to be campaigning everywhere. Mm -hmm. All you have to campaign is your local your locality, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, so because politics must first be local before it's global. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the so be, so that we begin to reduce the risk of violence mm -hmm. because you know in order for you to win an election, it's been said you probably need billion, like forty billion naira to run for president in Nigeria. So, how many people have that? So, so there are a lot of con, like, a lot of issues that is happening back home, and but we can solve them. But the willingness to solve them. It's not there yet because if you look at the 1960 movement, like you, you talked mm -hmm. about, a lot of the people who were able to make those movements within West Africa got their inspiration from outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many of them schooled outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. Many of them lived outside of Africa, but they got back as groups because it was very mm -hmm. deliberate. Mm -hmm. uh, the movement you saw was not something that happened accidentally. Right, the, it, the, those conversations started taking place in places like UK and the mm -hmm. likes, and so people came back to Nigeria with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe a time is coming. I believe the future of Nigeria and the future of Africa is in the diaspora movement. And that's one of the reasons why I thought it was important for me to come to the diaspora movement mm -hmm. at some point in time because I looked at what the future or looked into history because history gives you opportunity to, as like a way well, to some sense of direction. Mm -hmm. And I realized that a lot of changes always come from outside. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that's why it's important for us in the diaspora movement. That's why I'm involved actively, you know, mm -hmm. to, to begin to let people know that a time is coming when we will go home. Not home in the context of you have to go and relocate fully or something, but you will have to have contribution made back home. Just like the Jews also. That's what happened in Israel mm -hmm. too. Wow. So mo most definitely from a coaching perspective, as you're a coach as well, <laughs> what are you not? What are you not? <laughs> what are you not? <laughs> from a coaching perspective, I think what we did, uh, what I did get out of it is our abilities to change our mindset on the continent and the awareness that what we're doing is actually problematic, but it's, so it's not going to take us anywhere and um for 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 us here also i remember one of my mentors telling me that if you have the opportunity to be in this part of the continent you also got to understand that it is your responsibility to for not to uh, chastise those that we left because all they know is the system that they live in, but to also tell them about this new system or this variant system and how we could utilize parts of it, not ignoring our cultures, but still having a sense of culture and tradition, but transforming our system to move us ahead. So I, I am fully on, on that with you. So any person watching this beautiful, beautiful podcast, mm, mm, <laughs> ade, mm, thank you. Thank you. That was so beautifully said. That was so beautifully said. So what are your hopes and dreams for the Association for Nigerians in Nova Scotia? And how are you bringing the Afri other African you know, communities or whatnot? Because sometimes you are, you may be the president of the Nigerian Association or what Association of Nigerians, Association of Nigerians in Nova Scotia, but there are Ghanaians also there. There are South Africans, there are Cameroonians, we are all over the place. How have you thought about working to also bring them together, or how are you um doing that? Or if there is um any anything to bring all of us together in such mm -hmm. a manner. So there used to be a body like that. I was I was formerly the public relationship officer of that body, mm. uh so it's for Africans that are in diaspora. And one of the things I realized is um, at that point in time, you know, like there's a lot of work that has to happen between ourselves. I always tell my people that the competition is not within, the competition is without. Mm -hmm. But you see a lot of the times that we're competing with one another and that's where the, the problem is. And I also realized that in order for you to sell a future that is believable, you must demonstrate the future. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I try to do with the Nigerian Association is to paint pictures on the tablets of people's hearts mm -hmm. of what is possible, you know, because um, sometimes we don't know what is possible mm -hmm. because either because we're thinking too low mm -hmm. or we're competing against one another. Mm -hmm. And so we began to show people, first of all, how to, you know, how you can get resources. And we've been able to get amazing, a lot of, a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to do a lot of the projects that we've done. Mm -hmm. you know, I won't say the figure on, on this platform, but we've been able to. And as a result of that, we, we I personally collaborate with a lot of presidents. We're friends of the president of Ghana, as so she's a very good friend. The vice president mm -hmm. of the city and I work together at, at office even. Mm -hmm. And I collaborate with a couple of other associations. Oh, so and the Ghanaian one is a she. Yes, yeah, she's a she. Yeah. <laughs> you, you see. see she's a fantastic lady. Yeah. <laughs> And so they're funny enough, they're having their gala night this Saturday and we're supporting them, you know. Yes. So they're having the Ghana Gala Association, you know, mm -hmm. this Saturday and we're going to be there. And so I think for us it's important. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, but you reorientation. And, I, and it's easier for you to reorientate people when you're coming from the place of you have proven that, you know, you, you know when you are still, like the, the analogies, you're still struggling. 
and you're telling somebody, I don't have to compete. The person doesn't believe you. Mm -hmm. But when you come from the place of you succeeded at something and you're saying, you know, we don't have to, it, the messaging is different. Mm -hmm. So I, I, so it was important for us to show people that we can succeed at this. So we have what we call Dare to Dream Camp. The camp, we, we, we for two weeks during summer, we charge only $50, mm -hmm. right? We have great sponsors that help us make it happen. For two weeks, is perhaps the cheapest camp you have in the whole of Canada. I don't mm -hmm. know how many camps. 50 weeks. And we kids are with us from morning to after. So from 8.30 to about um, 2, 3, 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And they learn leadership skills and all of that stuff. So for us, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. But that was it. People didn't think those things were possible. We in This last summer, we had about almost close to total about 200 kids. Large numbers. Uh, so that's possibility. So we don't have to compete. I can now go and teach you how to replicate that mm -hmm. in other places because you, you're no longer seeing me as a threat. You're now seeing me as someone you can learn from. Mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. we're collaborating with a lot of the, uh, what's it called, presidents, a mm -hmm. lot of the associations, the Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. um, uh, Sudanese, mm -hmm. um, um, the Cameroonians. We even had like, so one of the, so during the Nigerian night week, we tried to incorporate some of those activities. That's why I saw that we did food culture with, with Ghana. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make it broader. You know, hopefully, maybe next year we might have you know four or five national competitions doing a food mm -hmm. competition about it. We did soccer with Jamaica, even mm -hmm. though they, they, they are blacks from you know from the Caribbeans. So for us, we're thinking broad. We're thinking that's mm -hmm. why I said we're thinking about bridges, inclusivity. Because, you know, in those, mm -hmm. Those connections and those pulling together, businesses can begin to try because you know oh, this person does this. So your mm -hmm. market is not limited to your nationality; mm -hmm. it's not limited to a broader multicultural system. Mm -hmm. So that's like, the more bridges we create, the more prosper. Building a thing, you have to be very deliberate. What we have done, we have been very deliberate. We're not doing this accidentally. We're mm -hmm. very purposeful in some of the things that we're doing. So those are some of the attempts we're doing to reduce competition, so that people are not. You know, the country are not with it. We are black, we should come together. Whether you're historical African Nova Scotian or you're recently arrived diaspora, we want us to collaborate because when we collaborate, we can do more, we can achieve more, we become a powerful force, a powerful block. Beautiful. My other question is about black excellence. <laughs> and it's like you kind of went there, there black excellence um the, over the summer i attended a um blacks in technology conference not that i'm in technology i deliver babies for a living <laughs> but i'm still equally interested highly interested in technology it was organized by a nigerian young man Lekan. Mm, i know him B, B, P something, I know that, yeah. B, uh, B, F, T, U, R, yes. I don't know. Yeah, up, 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 CD, up CD. And it was the most beautiful concentration of Black people, professionals, men and women and in between since we are here in canada i get mm -hmm. confused with the in-betweens but i just say it and i was in awe i felt so good no forget the good i felt great to be in that space to see black excellence on display what does black excellence mean for you or to you? So for me, I, I believe that anything that you have to do, you have to do it well. You know, um, anything you have to put your name in. One of the greatest currency you can have out there to succeed in the economic world is excellence. You know, I understand the place of learning. I understand. So for me, so what you describe is almost what that did not, what the African reality night was. You know, it, it always leaves people in awe. As in, when people come in, you know what they do? They come and meet me and start shaking my hands. I'm telling you. You know, and it's not like I go, you know, but you know, just the fact that, you know, putting up, I believe that one of the things I, I believe about excellence, that excellence is never compromised on the altar of money. Mm 
You know, when people dream, people dream from the perspective of what do I have in my pocket? You know, I don't what, yeah, I don't what exactly is that needs to be done. They're two different things. You know, so because we come from a place where there's poverty in Africa. Mm -hmm. So our thinking has been affected in a lot of ways without us knowing. You know, yes, is that you cut your coat according to your size. You know, so, the, so, so the problem yes. with, or sometimes we say you call your code according to the material. <laughs> <laughs> There's that saying. So, but what what has been ingrained, you know, yeah. in deliberate in the people's mm -hmm. mind is that oh, you 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 can only do things based on what is, mm -hmm. and so it leaves little to imagination. That's why we have a camp called Dare to Dream for kids between mm -hmm. four to fourteen. Because I want them to be able to dream beyond the limitations of their pocket. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to have the money for the money to come. Mm -hmm. Like I tell them, I say that your vision always would attract provision. So you shouldn't be thinking of, oh, I'm doing this based on what is it that I have. No, nobody has built a great business or enterprise simply because of what they have. They build businesses based on the impact of what he can achieve. And then based on the impact of what he can achieve, resources come, people will come and support you. And that's why the Holy Book says, write the vision, make it plain, that the people will come, resources will come. So I've never worried by myself about worry. For example, when we did the Nigerian Festival, we cost about over 130,000 to carry it out. Mm -hmm. And how does that happen? It's not that I have the 130,000 somewhere. It's just the ability to be able to say, you know what, this is the vision, mm -hmm. this is what it will achieve, mm -hmm. and then the money would come. So, and I think for us as black, we must begin to realize that money is not paper. Mm -hmm. It's not paper, it's money is an idea. And but uh, I know we're not doing business for all. all oh of that. no 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 no! You add it, add it. No no no. no. So for example, it, you look, it's you all part at, of it. Anybody look, listening will take whatever they need from this conversation. So please be free. Go where you need to go with. So you it. look at Elon Musk, for example. Who bought Twitter? How much of it was actually money? Mm -hmm. you know, because we need to understand that money is an idea. We are, a lot of us are so concentrated about chasing paper. You know, so the mm -hmm. most of the monies were what was stocks. What is stocks? You know, so I, I, I want I want I want our people to begin to think, not based on the because there's a lot of limitations that have been placed on us as Africans, and that's why my conversation with my brothers and sisters from the historical black community is the fact that we need to begin, you know, to they, we have been deprived, we have been limited on many aspects. But we must begin to rise above those limits, those, those you know, concepts, those limitations, those things that have been imposed on us for us to begin to dream. And that's why for me, excellence is all about the ability to dream and dream big, you know, so that you are not trying to do something. You know, I I remember back then for the association, there was a time the association used to do barbecue, as well barbecue in somebody's backyard. You know, but somebody came and dreamt and said, why? You know, so you, and there were resistance and all of that stuff. Wow, you know, money. You know, that's where people yes. go to first. Yes. You know, but, but money is just an idea. It's just, if people can understand money is just an idea, you know, um, somebody comes up with a new company and it's an idea. And because it's just an idea, you begin to see that's just an idea. So for me, black excellence is about understanding that it's just, understanding that you can, dream and dream big and that money is an idea it begins to unleash your creativity in another dimension i need to quote that <laughs> i need to quote that money is just an idea and excellence is the ability to dream and dream big hey hmm I knew I was going to have a fantastic uh, conversation <laughs> when I started uh, trying to toast you, but I didn't realize that it was going to take me to the moon and maybe so past the moon. Where are we? We are somewhere close to Jupiter. <laughs> I love, I love, I love my people. I don't. I love us blacks. 
And I I just want us to, you know, one of the things I, I tell people that, you know, to fix something like Nigeria is not a big deal. It just takes leadership because the average person is a good follower. Think so, about it. You know, I, I always use the analogy of uh, traffic in Lagos. You know, you said you mm -hmm. lived in Edgar. I don't know if you've been to Lagos. No. Where somebody takes one way. Mm -hmm. Immediately one person does it. Everybody does it. You know, and it's not like the person is doing the right thing. If it was the right thing, you can say, oh, you know, <laughs> but just try and imagine here in Canada that one person is breaking the law. You don't really, as a, you feel like the odd, the, the law breaker will feel like the odd person. No, you will get a few, because remember, our, our mix has changed. So there are people coming from the developing world still stuck with those. You will get a few of them following the, the trend. Well, Nova then, Scotia is different too. Nova Scotia, you know, when I drive in Nova Scotia, I drive in Toronto, there are two different things. So yeah. I was surprised in Toronto that when I walk on, on the crosswalk, that cars will still try and literally and hit you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know that you wait, they will finish the whole line. So, <laughs> so that I love my Nova Scotia. Thumbs up to Nova Scotians. We're very friendly people. You know, so, Mm -hmm. So maybe the analogy might not work in the bigger cities, but yes. yeah, you would literally look. For example, I remember during COVID, when they asked everybody to sit out. People in Ontario were protesting on the street. All of us, we sat at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, even no at protest. my junction here, people were protesting. It's like okay, so, so we are different in Nova. We're in Nova Scotia. We're very different kind of people. Right? Oh, okay, so, but, okay, okay. But the truth of the matter is, when you see people break the laws, people follow. Not just the laws. What, what I'm saying, even in a business, somebody starts something and they see it work. Everybody's good. Look at the perfect example now is the Guinness Book of World Record regarding cooking competition. You know, a chef decided to cook. Nobody knew about the award. Nobody cared about it. Immediately she did it. About four or five other persons have attempted that record within a few weeks afterwards. That's us. Because we know how to follow. Replicate, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we have a good leader, it means that we can replicate that quickly. So, so um, it's it's partly true, but my my thing as well is is that many African leaders start on a good note, but it's the people around them, the intentions of the people around them. And the um, more often than not, sometimes we also do blame, you know, it's like, oh, we have bad leadership, we have bad leadership. But how did we train them mm. from childhood, from the schools they went? Mm. They start taking one, uh, one Naira, one Naira. And then when, so if you start with one Naira, one Naira, and you get away with it, when you get to the upper echelons and you we'll have- One million. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, especially when it comes to um, Africa and um, our issues with leadership, I think we also need to look at our educational system uh, on the continent and- uh, Who's toasting you? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta send a message. Says, Stop toasting me. Stop toasting me. Na, 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 na is here. Nobody should toast you. <laughs> so, yes, um, maybe our educational system should be looked into because that is also problematic. And then the leadership mindset, which you, you touched on on so have you ever thought about you know coaching the young you know students or the young up and coming in nigeria or precursor to that that when was the last time you stepped foot on the motherland pretty enough i was there last year but i was there briefly um mm -hmm. It was nice being home. I'm hoping to actually go back mm -hmm. this often next year and visit. You know, and just spent because that was a very short one. I was supposed to be there for ten days. The half of the time I was, I felt ill. 
<laughs> from Sorry. the age of weather and all of that. <laughs> so I was also like, get me out of here. I got to go. Because <laughs> everybody was worried for me, you know, my wife. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking... I'm looking forward to being able to go back. But uh, regarding uh, what to do within Africa, um, I, I, I always see myself as a careful builder. Um, I'm not sure the time is right for me to do anything directly in Nigeria, or in the, at least in those regards. I think it's important for me to, you know, to develop what we're doing in the diaspora movement. Mm -hmm. um, like, because... There's a lot of worth that there's a lot of, you know, so like somebody said to me, said, how big would you see a Nigerian in diaspora that, that doesn't really want to go back home or that doesn't like home? Which we're well, Omri, I mean, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But obviously it's because the systems have failed. Mm -hmm. And the people who have who are failing the system are unwilling to let go. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to be able to make some of those type of changes, we're going to require critical numbers. When I mean numbers, I'm talking about you know money and everything mm -hmm. in order for us to go in there and do that. So I think we're at a stage where I would say people are just um, trying to discover themselves abroad, mm -hmm. trying to empower themselves and the rest. So I'm not sure personally that it's my time for me to do anything really in Nigeria, apart from the black tax that we all send back to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, Above of that, and then uh, I guess not in the next. I don't see next, you know, twenty four months or thirty six yet. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, what my real call and desire is to see how do I impact lives, you know, here mm -hmm. in Nova Scotians here. And, and truly speaking, my vision is broader than just being um, Nigerians, or you know, because at the end of the day, building bridges across. Yes. Because if you look at what your need is, what the need of an African Nova Scotian is, mm -hmm. or a Kenyan or whatever, is literally almost all the same. Yes. You know, we, we want we want to have a secure future. We want to be able to raise our kids in peace. You know, we want to be able to have uh, something for our old age. You know, the, so I begin to realize that mm -hmm. the messages that we echo for a community is actually a message that resonates around all the various communities. Mm -hmm. But it's important for us to educate ourselves so that we don't see ourselves as threats. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said earlier, what you do not know, you will be you will be terrified of. And uh, so for me, I think that's where more of my energy and calling and all that lies in the interim. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why for me it was important for us to have that dead dream camp. Mm -hmm. We've had it uh, three times now, three or four times. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about you know, the feedback from me. It and and I, I think that's my contribution to the next generation for now, you know, rather than trying to start a movement in Nigeria. Legacy. Hmm. Uh, legacy is interesting. Um, I, I, there's a bank in Nigeria. When you get into the bank as, as a with staff, they ask you to write your obituary. Um, whether right or wrong, now it's a different thing, but that's a good one. <laughs> so basically, they ask what is it that you want written on your tombstone? Mm -hmm. So, more like, so I see it more like you have to work with the end in goal, right? Yeah. yeah, so you more like you know, you work from the end to the start, mm -hmm. uh, so that way your life is a lot more purposeful. Mm -hmm. Is a lot more impactful where you're more cognizant about the future. I was raised by my dad, and my dad always made me cognizant about the future in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, he would say it's not today you know, today's called present, tomorrow you don't know. So that's what you should be preparing for. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's important. It's important in leadership, it's important in everything. And that's some of our biggest problem in our politicians. They're not seeing the future, they're not seeing mm -hmm. the kids. So they are eating everything up today. And that's the reason why you embezzle, mm -hmm. embezzle that you, you, you steal so much that even your children's children cannot finish it, you know, because people can't see. People can't see. Mm -hmm. So for me, legacy is, is basically a vision in the end mm -hmm. and working from the end to the front. So that's how I've lived my life. I, I, I Somebody once, I, I remember as a kid, I asked someone, I said, what does it require me to live for long, for life? And the person said, the best way you can live forever is to touch another person. Mm. You know, I 
recognize that that's so powerful. Mm. So I, I, I live my life to, to the service of humanity. I live, yeah, if anything's going to ever be read or said about me, and I'm extremely passionate about it. I remember when I was, you know, I was about to run for Nigerian Association president, and I was talking so passionately. People were like, how can you be passionate about this? You know, mm. I've never lost my passion one day. I'm sure you could even feel my passion even in, in things I say, because I live to serve humanity. Yeah. Because I believe there's a place called better, there's a place mm -hmm. called forward, and I believe that our people deserve the best. And that's one of the things that I always want to be remembered for. The man who lived and offered humanity the best possible leadership that they could have. That is a beautiful ending to a wonderful conversation with Ade. I don't want to miss this ending with any other. My brother from another mother. It's a great honor to be here. I'm, I'm from the motherland. My uh, and you are from Wakanda for life. <laughs> Wakanda for life. That's right. Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda for life. Ade, I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I know we had our earlier challenges, but we overcame. Our village people will not they hold us down. Me. Mm. Because of the Atlantic Ocean will not allow. It will not allow. <laughs> They'll still get stuck there. Their wires are not crossing. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so if one. we're trying to find more about you, where can we find you? And since you're also a coach and a business consultant and etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, where can people find you? That's a very good question. Um and I said LinkedIn, <laughs> but I haven't well, posted there in a few in a few weeks because I just be so. Uh -huh. So by October, November, December, I do time when I try to envision the year, the next year. Uh -huh. So like all the things that we did this year, I'd seen it by October last year. You uh -huh. know, so so I spent a lot of my time. That's why some of those questions were coming because I I guide that period a lot to. Mm -hmm. so because it's my best period to be ready for next. I don't think that, I think a lot of people try to get ready when they should be executed. Uh, mm -hmm. So too much of what I'm saying about just those moments where, you know, I just need to be ready for the year. So I haven't posted a while there, not because I don't have materials to post. So I'll say LinkedIn. I also have a page, I have my personal page, but I also have a page called, I think, okay, for building bridges. Mm -hmm. It's a Facebook page. Um, I'm intending to strengthen that in the coming weeks and months because, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to see that it's important for me to resonate beyond just a community, but, you know, beyond mm -hmm. the, the whole of Nova Scotia. So I have a page like that. I think I have maybe just a hundred and something followers on that. 254. Uh, oh, 254. I didn't even know. <laughs> well, you've seen it already. I haven't, been, I haven't been logged into that page in a long time. Oh, wow, 254. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I have a stick of 100 or something. I need to add myself and then it will be two, yes, 55. Yeah, so uh, that's another, uh, yes. we're going to be doing a lot more on that page going mm -hmm. forward from January That because I've met with some of my media people uh, because it's important for us to, you know, to carry a message that resonates. Like uh, some African investigation f friends of mine met me and say, you know, go here, powerhouse. And nobody's ever de 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 uh, described it as that. So I was shocked, you know. And normally I'm not always taken aback. And I was like, you know, say you have a voice that is important for for you to resonate beyond. So I I, I would do myself a disservice if I just try to just sound for just Nigerians. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a bigger platform for us to be able to begin to advocate for. And I'm hoping that I can gradually begin to advocate for that bigger plan. That, that is why I asked that question because it, it was coming out. So I wanted to kind of peel back the layers <laughs> and see if the awareness of that was there. But it came at the end here. Okay, great, 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 great. So we can find you at the Goke. Um, what is your last name? Fadari, Fadari, yeah. yes. I I go uh, go go cave Fadari on Facebook, on LinkedIn, where I found him, and um, you are on Twitter. Your Twitter page is not working. It's working, Pigos. Pigos, okay. I'll double check at it. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, you are all there. So. 
Google the name and you'll find him everywhere you want. And you can <laughs> send him a message on any of those platforms. But I found LinkedIn to be the platform he responded the most. <laughs> and yes, and a little bit of Shakara, but that is okay. <laughs> 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 thank you so much I, I i i am praying for bigger things and you know better things because as they say when one part um it, when one part of us is succeeding all of us are succeeding and he who or he or she who climbs a good tree is given the push so anything i can do to support please let me know if it comes to money to be a little bit challenging. But like you said, <laughs> if you have the idea, the money will follow. The money will flow. The money will flow. Thank you so much. Any Thank last so words? Much. Well, I just want to say great job you're doing. To be honest, this is fantastic. I'm always excited when I see us tell our own story. I'm not waiting for people to. So I want to just encourage you to continue to do what you're doing. Um, there's a saying that say that the, though the beginning might be small, Latin shall be exceedingly great. Uh, there's a place called Ford, and I want to let you know that it's going to get bigger and better. And don't stop dreaming, um, never stop dreaming, you know. So, if you've done it this way, increase it, you know. Do it I bigger. am because you are, I am because we are. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>